Hey kids, welcome back to our series called Game Plan. We are learning how we always do best when we follow God's plan for our lives. Have you ever been to the store and walked down the generic aisle? It is full of cheap knockoffs of the real product. And these items look just like the real products, but they break easier and they don't last as long as the real product. Well, the world tries to give us a cheap knockoff of the real life that God has promised us for our lives. You see, sin, fame, money, and so much more are dangled in front of us, and we are told that these things will bring us happiness. But life without Jesus is no life at all. And we're going to learn about that in our lesson today. But first, Todd is going to learn an important lesson from our power verse about following God's plan and learning about God's game plan for his life. Check it out. Good morning to you, my friend Todd. I am happy today. Check this out. I just got an email from my good buddy, Nikhil O'Shiel. He has to do an orange juice commercial, dress up like a grandma, and get shot out of a cannon. It's hilarious. What's the matter, Todd? You're looking kind of glum today. Well, the team captain, Ryan, has been making fun of me a lot lately, and everyone's been laughing at me. If Ryan wasn't so mean to me, then I'd feel a lot better. Well, as you and I both know, there's a very good reason you didn't make the team. It wasn't my fault I didn't make the team. I tried to find my good luck charm to bring to tryouts, but I couldn't find it. What was your good luck charm? My lucky parrot. Your lucky parrot? Yeah, his name's Petey. Well, Petey ain't here, so forget about it. Oh, great. Ryan's here. Ryan is a little girl? Yeah? So? <laughs> you mean to tell me that you, a nearly grown man, are scared out of your mind out of a weak, pathetic little girl? I mean, oh, a mean little girl? Why did you leave him alone, little girl? But how is this happening? Where did that ball come from? Why don't you leave us alone, Ryan? What's the matter, Todd? You want me to call you a wambulance? Why don't you leave me alone? I'm trying to work on my skills so I can make the team. You'll never get on the team. The only reason I didn't make it was because I couldn't find my lucky parrot that day. Oh, you mean this parrot? Hey, that's mine! Ow! It's no use. She's never gonna give me back Petey, and I'm never gonna make the team. I might as well just quit. Hey, 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 that is no way to talk, all right? You know what? This reminds me of a pretty awesome promise that God makes for us in the Bible. Oh yeah? What's that? John 10.10 10 says that the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. Well, that is certainly not encouraging. Well, listen to the end of the verse. God said, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. A rich and satisfying life? That sounds good. Listen, shortstop, I understand that your enemy is trying to steal your joy and your parrot, but forget about it. God will take care of all that and he's gonna give you that rich and satisfying life that the verse talks about, real life. That sounds awesome. I would really like that. Okay, well listen, today's lesson is gonna have a brand new game plan that I think is really gonna help you out. Come with me, okay? Now where did you find that parrot? It smells like cheese. Our enemy, the devil, wants to steal our joy, kill our hope, and destroy our dreams. But God promises life real life and that's what you're going to be learning about in your lesson today but right now it's time for you to check in from Callie in the Valley and she's going to teach you what you got to know you know I gotta tell you what you gotta know tell you what you gotta know you know I gotta tell you what you gotta know tell you what you gotta know hey kids it's me Callie from the Valley, and I'm like here to tell you like what you gotta know. Today, we're like talking about how like living for Jesus gives us real satisfying life, okay? So every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. Life without Jesus ain't no life at all, 
people are like always making up lame rules for how we're supposed to live. Like they don't know. They're like, rule number one, don't run inside the building. Like what if a bear is chasing you inside of school? Rule number two, don't step on a crack or your mom will need like a back surgery or something. Then who will take me to the mall? Rule number three, don't eat your ice cream too fast or your brain will freeze over and then it'll start snowing in your head. Where's the weatherman when you need him? Okay, living for God is not like following a list of totally weird rules. It's all about Jesus and following him. So every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. Life without Jesus ain't no life at all. And that is what you gotta know. I'm Callie from the Valley saying TTYL. 997 Mississippi, 998 Mississippi, 999 Mississippi, 1000. Yo, Trainer Max, what's up, bro? What's up? All right, this is the perfect plan to get all your ducks in line. Uh, can you please turn that off so I could actually hear you and hear my own thoughts? All right, well, this is a schedule that will help you get, I planned out every hour for every day of your life. And this, I already emailed to you, <laughs> insta you, Facebooked you, Dropboxed you, and snail mailed this whole schedule to you. Wow, Max, uh, thank you for doing that, but I'm okay with my own schedules because I'm fine. But what made you want to do all that? Well, I, sh I heard you talking to the kids about having a real life. Yeah. And I thought, man, that's real sad. So what? I decided to make this for you. Why is it so real sad? No, what I'm talking about today is how God has a game plan and his game plan is the real life that he has for us. All right. Well, you see right here, number one is make your bed. Number two, wash your face and brush your teeth. Number three is you got to flush the toilet. And number four... Max, 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 you got it wrong. We're not talking about following all the list of rules to have a real life. You see, we're learning how if we have Jesus in our hearts, that is the first step to following the real life God has for us. You see, because a life without Jesus is no life at all. That is the perfect plan. A life following Jesus. Exactly. That is what we're talking about because like I said, life without Jesus is no life at all. Whoa, what's that? Well, you know, everybody's got to go sometimes and well, I scheduled bathroom breaks for you, so time to go, buddy. Max, trust me, I'm okay right now. All right, well, that's your call, of course, because I didn't want you to have an accident in front of all these awesome kids. Max, Please, new topic. All right, yogurt, it is so healthy. It helped me grow a whole nother inch after I stopped growing. And why is that important? Why is yogurt important to a schedule? Well, you see, it is a nut, it is an option for your 4 p.m. snack time. Okay, interesting. Okay, new new subject thank you thank you okay clothes to wear to skunk yoga and go did he say skunk yoga as in skunks doing yoga well yes i did say skunk yoga but is that where you lost your glasses because i realized you're not wearing them today well you know you see i lost them doing store shelf climbing uh what i told you not to do last week yeah. Oh, Max. But anyways. Okay, so skunk yoga. Skunk yoga is where you go into the woods and do yoga with a family of skunks. So the skunks aren't doing yoga, but you're doing the yoga near the skunk. Max, Max, that doesn't sound real at all. And it doesn't sound like a great plan either. Well, it is real. And it's real stinky too. Okay. Because after every time I do skunk yoga, I always have to throw away my clothes because of the terrible stench that I can't get out of my clothes. So, if you have any suggestions, 
me and my housemates would really like them. How about maybe not doing skunk yoga at but all? But I can't. I love me some skunk yoga. You know what I'm saying? No. Well, I do. Anyways, gotta run. Them skunks aren't gonna wait around all the time. All right, bye, Max. Kids, I'm so glad Trainer Max didn't do skunk yoga before he came here today. That would have been nasty. Today's Bible story is found in the book of John, chapter 9. Jesus was walking on a road with all of his disciples when they came across a man who was blind. This meant that this man had no way to make a living, so he generally earned money by begging on the side of the road. Jesus' disciple asked him, who sinned? Was it this man or was it his parents? And the reason that question was asked, because in Jesus' time, they generally believed that someone had to sin if someone was deaf, blind, or lame. But Jesus knew that this was not the case. So Jesus answered them and said, this happened so that the power of God could be seen in him. Jesus knew exactly what the man needed. He needed to experience real life. Jesus knelt down beside the man and he spit on the ground. He mixed the spit and the dirt together to make mud and he put that mud right on the man's eyes. Can you imagine what people were thinking when they saw this? After rubbing the mud on the man's eyes, Jesus then told that man to go and wash his eyes in a pool that was nearby. And the important thing is that this man obeyed what Jesus told him to do. And after he washed the mud off of his eyes, he was able to see instantly. And he began to celebrate because now he could experience a life that he had never had before. He was once blind, but now he was able to see. Meanwhile, a group of Pharisees came along. Pharisees were a group of religious people who would make up rules for other people to follow. One of the rules that they made up was that you were not able to perform a healing on the holy day of the Sabbath. Well, they were upset with Jesus because Jesus had performed a healing on the Sabbath day. But Jesus told them, you are more blind than he was. Jesus was telling them that they didn't really know what real life was about. It was not about making up rules for people to follow. Real life is about knowing Jesus and being able to experience all that he has for us in this life. So in today's lesson, you're gonna learn all about the real life that Jesus offers. It's gonna be amazing. My name is Ray Teese, but nobody goes by Ray anymore. It's far too long, so I just shortened it to R. So you can call me R. Teese. Now, I've just been working on my latest masterpiece, but I've been working so hard, I really need a break. So I thought that you could help me with today's power verse. See, the problem is I sleepwalk at night. And last night, I was painting today's power verse, and I started using pictures instead of words. So I need you to help me figure out what it's supposed to say. Let's take a look at it. The thief's dolphin? What? I don't remember there being dolphins in the Bible. Oh, you know what? I bet it's porpoise. You know, another word for dolphin. Which sounds like purpose. Yes, purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My dolphin, oh, no, right, it's purpose is to present. No, that's not it. Boys and girls, what could that word be? Oh, yes, give them a money cash. No, I bet it's rich and satisfying life. John 10, 10. That's it. 
Great job, boys and girls. Now, let's make sure that we don't forget it. So everyone stand up and say it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. John 10.10 10. Great job everyone! You can all have a seat. Now would you like to see what I've been painting today? This one is very special to me because it's a portrait of my dear friend. He's actually my neighbour. He lives right next door to my house in my garden. He's a butterfly. Anyway, he told me one day, he said, oh, I dream that one day I could be a businessman. And I said, Mr. Butterfly, you can be whatever you want to be. So this painting is in honour of my friend. I let him follow his dream. In my painting, of course. Here it is, Mr. Butterfly the Businessman. You can do anything you want, Mr. Butterfly. You are amazing. Anyway, thank you all so much for your help today. I'll see you later, boys and girls. Bye-bye. Alright kids, did you know that there are criminals out there in the world who make fake money? This money is known as counterfeit money. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between real money and counterfeit money. Let's see how good you are at figuring it out. Can you tell which one is real and which one is fake? Alright, let me give you a few seconds. Alright, in three, two, one, boom! The top one is the real one, and the bottom one is fake. It's hard to tell, but it's so important to be able to recognize what is real and what is fake. The world tries its best to make us believe that they know what real life is for us. They think being involved in sin is fun, but we know that sin leads to death and not life. Things like money, power, and fame may seem like great things to have in life, but they are nothing compared to the real life that Jesus has for our lives. Jesus said, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. That is a life of love, freedom, and joy. The Pharisees tried to convince everyone that God wanted them to follow these man-made rules in order to have life that he had planned for them. But Jesus taught the people something we all need to learn, and that is living for God is not about following a list of rules. It's not just the Pharisees. There are even people today who think that in order to be a Christian, they have to follow all these kinds of rules, dress a certain way, live out their lives this way, listen to this kind of music, and they try to earn God's love by following a bunch of rules that they made up themselves. If you follow their rules, then you can be in their Christian club, but if you don't, then you can't. Of course, we know that God's game plan is not just to give us a list of rules to follow. He sent His Son Jesus to earth in order to provide forgiveness of sin so that we can be in relationship with God. Jesus knew that it isn't about rules, but it is all about relationship. Jesus came to show us our real need, which is Him. Remember how Jesus healed the blind man in our Bible story today? The Pharisees got mad because Jesus broke one of their rules by healing on the Sabbath day. Jesus told them, you are more blind than he was. Now, Jesus wasn't saying that they are actually blind. You see, Jesus meant that they really couldn't see what his real mission was. It wasn't about following the rules. It was about having a relationship with him. And sometimes, kids, we are blind also. We start thinking that the life this world offers with its money, power, and fame is the life that we are supposed to live out in our lives. And Jesus wants us to take off those blinders out of our eyes so that we can see that our real need is not power, fame, and all these sin that the world tries to convince us to be a part of, but it is Him that we need to focus on. When we accept Jesus into our lives, we discover what life is really all about. Following Jesus brings real life. Real life is not about rules. 
It's not about the money. It's not about the fame. It's not about the power. It's about none of that. But real life is about freedom from sin and finding peace, joy, and relationship with Jesus. So say no to the fake life and say yes to the real life in your life. When you make Jesus your Lord and Savior, you enter into the real life that he has for your life. And God has planned a great life for you and his game plan is so perfect and God wants you to follow his perfect game plan for your life. And when we follow God's game plan, guess what kids? We are following the real life that God has for us. So let's pray because it's so easy sometimes to fall into the fake life and be a part of this fake life. But it is important that we follow God's game plan and that we follow the real life that God has for our lives. Let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you for who you are, God, and I pray that we wouldn't be blinded by the fake life that we are encouraged to follow in our lives, but I pray that we take off the blinders. I pray that we focus on you, that we follow your game plan so that we can live out the real life that you have for us, Lord. We know you have a perfect plan. You have a purpose for every single kid who is watching today, Lord. And God, I pray that they would follow your game plan for their lives. Let us not live out this fake life, but let us follow the real life that you have for us. In your name we pray, amen. Kids, God has a purpose. God has a plan for your life. Let's be sure we follow the real life, God's game plan for our lives. Thank you for joining us this weekend. We will see you next weekend as we continue our series called Game Planning.